but will had to put the disappointment of that playoff defeat at Wembley firmly behind them as their season kicked off early at Southampton in front of the Sky cameras. The Saints were newly relegated from the championship, but it was they who took the lead on 51 minutes, courtesy of this effort from Matt Patterson. From that point though, Millwall began to get the upper hand and they had a real chance of an equaliser when Jason Price was brought down in the box and the referee pointed to the spot. With regular penalty taker Neil Harris on the bench, the responsibility fell to Alan Dunn but his was a weak kick and Kelvin Davis also saved the rebound from Jason Price. The Lions though weren't to be denied and from a Chris Hackett corner Steve Morrison nodded the ball back and there was Jimmy Abdu rising from 12 yards to nod home. Square to Fusini, Fusini to Alan Dunn, Dunn into feet there, Hackett, now Chris Hackett's got away on this right hand side, can he get the shot away Chris Hackett, comes inside, tries to slot it, goalkeeper makes the save, and it's going into the back of the net by Gary Alexander and Millwall are in front, well it was a good play wasn't it, firstly the ball into Chris Hackett, he did well, cut inside, Worked himself an opportunity, goalkeeper parries the save, but that was a super volley from Gary Alexander uh, to lash it into the back of the net. And his first goal of the season, it's uh, Millwall 1 Bournemouth. Yeah. Home games in eight days. Yeah, and a few old favourites, we've got uh, Mr Pidgeley coming on his return at the weekend, and then uh, Darren Byfield who's signed for Oldham now. Has he really? Well there we are. Yes, what's the betting that one or both of them will have a particularly outstanding game? But here's Chris Hackett for Millwall, who lead by a goal to nil in this Carling Cup first round tie. That's not a bad cross, it's Alexander, does it square, and in the far post, and it's Neil Harris who gets it. Millwall, two to the good, lovely cross firstly from the right hand side, Alexander knocking it back across, and there's Neil Harris stealing in at the far post to score from a couple of yards. Is that goal 119 or 120? I've lost count. But it's goal plenty for Neil Harris. Neil will lead by two goals to nil. Hackett takes the throw. Alexander made the run, wanted the ball. Now Hackett again. Thinks it inside. Lovely little one, two. Now into Alexander to Harris. To Alexander again. Looking for Harris in. Neil Harris could score a great goal. Oh, oh, what a oh. superb goal that was from Millwall. Neat into passing play there, involving five players. And Neil Harris with the outside of his right foot drills it into the far corner. It's Millwall 3 for McNeil. Well, to be true for us, a passing goal, you probably won't see a better one this season. A series of really good one twos. First of all, in holding Dunn and Hackett. Then they brought Alexander. He then brought in Harris. A series of one twos between them. And suddenly Harris burst into the box, rounded the last defender, and then curled it around the keeper with the outside of his foot. A really class goal there. The one player they might want to perhaps give a bit of a rest to is probably Jimmy Abdo. Let Mark Laird play in his position, that free role in the centre of midfield. Just let Ali doing the superb job that he is doing, just, just holding everything together. Yeah, Ali's uh, had a very bright game and here is Harris again, right edge of the penalty here. He tries a spectacular one! Oh, 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 oh. What a screamer from Neil Harris! It's his hat-trick and you won't see a better one! He whacks it in from all of 35 yards from an angle into the far corner. Millwall 4, Bournemouth 0, Neil Harris hat-trick. Well, it was almost reminiscent of Gary Alexander's goal in the playoff final. Just let the ball come off his chest, running out towards the touchline, and then just thought, oh, I'll hit this, and absolutely creamed it over the goalkeeper and into the far corner. All Millwall at the moment as Alan Dunn has the ball just inside the Carlisle half. Goes square to Jack Smith. Smith in towards the feet of uh, Alexander. Morrison does he keep it in play? Just about. Alexander flicks on. Now Hackett will chase down that right hand side if he can keep this in. Neil Harris is in there. Harris with the ball. Oh, just wide. Well, that was two great pieces of technique there. First of all, second to keep it in play and to dig out a decent cross. And then Neil Harris from a really awkward position to hook it goalwards and it just went the wrong side of the post. Alan Dunn gets it down under control. 
There's a little look forward to Morrison now to Chris Hackett. Hackett wants to cross early. Only Alexander in the box. Looking for Gary Alexander, looping oh, header! Oh. Just over the bar. And that was what Gary looks for. He gets on that full back and doesn't know if he's going to come in front of him or around the back. If you hang the ball up in the right areas, Gary will win them. Smith up towards Harris. Are you sure? The ball rolls through to Steve Morrison, right edge of the box, can he find enough? Shoot and shoot, he hits the post! Outside of his right foot, ball back off the post, Alexander turns it back in, Harris with the header, oh, just over the bar. Good play from Steve Morrison there, he sort of ran into the box, stood everybody up, and just as they expected him to go one way or the other, he just toe-poked the ball on the target, and it never sort of moved off its, uh, as it went dead to the post, and just smacked against it, and unluckily for him, it went out rather than in. Ball back towards Kavanagh. Alan Dunn picks it off him and uh, clears it away. But there's nobody there in a blue shirt, so Porter still has it. Packs it in towards the edge of the penalty area. A little flick and you know, Alan Dunn makes it clear. Neil Harris wasn't quite watching it, but now he's got it. And he plays it out with Dave Martin. Now move it. A chance of a break. Lots of blue shirts flooding forward. Martin goes on the outside. He's gone quite wide. Martin. Ball towards the oh. bar. the bar. Bounces back for Morrison, still bodies in there. Oh, and uh, three players there, and, St and Steve Morrison unable to find any of them. But uh, Millwall trying to get a bit of intense pressure going here. Good play by Frampton. Nice ball out to Hackett on that right hand side. Smith goes on the overlap, still Hackett though. Decides whether to cross it from there, gives it instead to Smith, who's a bit further up in towards Morrison. Tries to flick, here's Dave Martin, can't control it, and he scores! And the second attempt, Dave Martin gets it under control and crashes it in off the underside of the bar. Excellent play there by Steve Morrison to set him up. It looked like the chance had gone, but then at the second attempt, Dave Martin had got it under control and slashes it into the net, off the crossbar. It's Millwall 1 Oldham Mill. Ball into the penalty area, danger here for Millwall, that's a good challenge, is it? No, a shock referee says that. no, that and is Tony a shock Craig incident. claims he got the ball. An absolute shocker. Andy Holdsworth it was who went down, and it looked to me as though the ball was played there by Tony Craig, knocked it sideways. Craig is asking for the uh, referee's assistant to help out here. Well, Pavel Abbott will take the spot kick for Oldham. David Ford saved five last season. Can he do so again to preserve Millwall's lead? Abbott then uh, steps up to take the penalty kick from the spot. And Ford guesses the right way and makes a brilliant save again. What a save that is from David Ford. Now that was a great save. That was hit firm right into the corner. He got over there and got a really good hand on it and got it up and away. Fantastic save, and that's as much as it deserved. David Ford clears long up towards Gary Alexander. Gets a flick out to Barton, that's excellent play by Alexander. Now there's three, four in the middle, can he pick the cross out? There's Harris! Oh, and the ball just wide of the target. Well, that was a great piece of play by Neil Harris here. He went to run to the back post, completely lost Sean Gregan started back to the near post, rose unchallenged, but he just couldn't quite direct his header on the goal and it just drifted wide. Ali Fusini keeps a watchful eye on that, gets it forward to Harris, Harris holds it up, now to Frampton, Frampton takes a touch, back to Harris, now Harris has got room to work with, Price has made a run forward, so has, Andy Fr uh, so has Gary Alexander, Price in the centre, Alexander if he can just keep it in play, He's only got Price in the middle to aim for. Might as well put it in there. Here is Jason Price. There is Neil Harris. There's the second goal. Game set and match. Millwall 2, Oldham 0. What a class piece of play from Jason Price there. A looping ball to the back post. He did panic. He knew exactly what to do. He put a perfect header straight back into the path of Neil Harris. And basically from four yards could miss. This Friday night affair at Roots Hall was hardly a classic and chances were few and far between at both ends. The nearest Mill came to scoring was this header from Gary Alexander which crashed against the bar, the rebound seemingly hitting Tony Craig before he blazed over.
There was a bit of a let off for the Lions too at the other end. Alex Ravel's header coming back off a post. David Ford saving the rebound. And so to a Carling Cup tie at Upton Park, which will be remembered for all the wrong reasons. It all started so promisingly for the Lions as Scott Barron's throw was nodded into the path of Neil Harris and he opened the scoring after 25 minutes. Chopper was in a rich vein of scoring form at this stage and he admitted it's always special to get one against the Hammers. They will look to be on their way to the third round but with just three minutes left Junior Stanislas popped up with an equaliser for West Ham to send the tie into extra time. The game then turned on this controversial incident. As the cross comes in, Andy Frampton slides, the ball hits him on the arm and the referee points to the penalty spot. Stanislas it was who made it 2-1 to the home side. With Millwall pushing forward looking for a second goal themselves, it was always likely they'd be caught on the counter-attack. Zevon Hines scoring the third for West Ham. and he's got two to aim for in the box if he gets his head up into the middle, he goes! Yes, the puts the score in for Millwall! It could have been Jimmy Abdu, it certainly was Jason Price as Dave Martin puts the ball on the plate for the Millwall striker who knocks it in from no more than six yards. It's Millwall 1, right and home Albion now. Millwall still leading by a goal to nil, that crosses a deep one, there's the chance! And there's the equalising goal, Nicky Forster's got it and I could see it coming. And then Nicky Foster pulled straight out the back post there. Everyone had come in tight within the width of the goal. And it was similar to the West Ham goal where basically he got as wide as he could and then was coming in on the cross. And by the time Dunning turned to face him, he had no chance of making a challenge. This wasn't one of the Lions' better nights as they slid out of the Johnston's paint trophy at the first hurdle. Kenny Jackett's injury hit side lost returning skipper Paul Robinson after 37 minutes, but by that time we're already a goal down to this tap-in by Jake Hyde. Millwall had plenty of chances of their own, with Jason Price going closest with a shot that hit the underside of the bar. But it was Ishmael Yakubu who found the target for the Bees to end the Lions' hopes. Such was the injury crisis in the Lions squad by this stage that Kenny Jackett was only able to name five substitutes at Bristol Rovers, including youngsters John Marquis and Keenan Hughes-Mason. Jeff Hughes opened the scoring for Rovers from the penalty spot after he had been brought down by Andy Frampton. The Lions' opportunities were limited, with Alan Dunn's header from debutant Danny Schofield's corner as close as they came to levelling. Chris Lyons put the game beyond Millwall's reach in the 63rd minute with this stunning strike from 25 yards. Darren Ward and James Henry both returned to Millwall to make their second debuts at Gillingham. However, this was another disappointing away display and the Lions found themselves a goal down after just six minutes from this cracker from Andy Barcham. Henry was inches away from an equaliser with this strike. But it was former Lion Curtis Weston who had the last word with the Jill's second just before half time. Summer signing Steve Morrison was still looking for his first goal but was just denied by Simon Royce. After six games without a win, high flying Huddersfield Town visited the Den in mid September. Lying in 16th spot at the start of the day, Millwall needed a performance and a result to inspire the home crowd. They duly provided it with Chris Hackett and Neil Harris combining for the winger to net a stunning opener. Harris then turned from provider to scorer, nodding home the second from Dave Martin's chip.
Chopper may not be the tallest of strikers, but it is remarkable how many goals like this he scores with his head. Four minutes into the second half and Steve Morrison finally got off the mark. His contribution to the team had been impressive to this point, but every striker needs a goal, even if it is a bit of a scrambled effort. Huddersfield were dead and buried long before the final whistle, but they did grab a consolation with this bobbler from Jordan Rhodes five minutes from time. David Ford was clearly frustrated by the inability of his side to keep a clean sheet and his reaction earned him a yellow card. The most important thing it was the result today. Um, taking all personal like, um, performances aside, I mean the, the team's performances, especially the first half, um, was was massive today. It was a big re result for us. We needed a win after the last couple of games. Uh, we're starting to get players back, but we knew we needed to come in and put a performance in. We started the game well, and um, yeah, it was really really pleasing. A big win though, um, with three games coming up against sides nearer the bottom of the table than the top. This is now the time to push on with players coming back, hopefully Robbo, Tony Craig not very far, Jason Price and Gary Alexander nearer to being back in the first team. You know you've got a squad if everybody's fit to challenge, but you've given the Charltons and the Leeds Uniteds a bit of a head start, but you yeah. have pegged back one of the front runners in Huddersfield. No, I, th I think, uh, as I was saying on, uh, on, on Thursday, and the manager's been saying, it, it doesn't matter who you're playing in the league, whether it's a Huddersfield or someone near the, near the bottom of the league, if you don't approach, approach the game right, you're going to get turned over because it's a tough league and a minimum you've got to put in was, is 100% effort which we showed today and with our quality and the squad we've got um, if we put that effort in then we'll get results but as I said um, you play the lower teams in the league and you think you can sit off they'll turn you over so it doesn't make a difference really. Hopes that the Lions could translate that impressive display against Huddersfield Town into their away form were immediately dashed at Brisbane Road, where substitute Andros Townsend opened the scoring for the O's. Townsend might have added a second for a team who was still looking for their first home win, but was denied by David Ford. Here is this corner from Henry. It's an outswinger this time. Again, it's deep. It's Morrison with the header. It hits the top of the crossbar and goes over. Yeah, it's just a shame it didn't go, get a little more angle on it because we had two players at the far post wanting to jump to head it in, but it just drifted across the centre of the goal, clipped the top of the crossbar and out. Here's Nathan Jones. Plays the ball square. Chance for McDonald to have a shot. That's not a bad one. David Ford pushes it onto the crossbar and that's the closest we've come to a goal. Yes, and that was a case of the, the happened to us a couple of times earlier in the season where play developed and the player was left all on his own about 10 yards outside the box and had lots of time to assess the situation and hit a good shot and David Ford done well to get it onto the crossbar. Here's uh, Schofield on that far side of the field. Puts it onto his right foot, uh, delivers across, Alexander's there with the header, oh, and he just heads it wide of the target, and we just haven't got Gary into that position often enough. That was a good cross from Schofield, and Gary's so close to getting that on target. Yeah, the unfortunate thing, he actually got too much of it in the end and made too good a contact. A bit of a glancing contact, it might have got in the corner. The league table after the first two months of the season didn't look promising. Already the Lions found themselves 12 points behind the automatic promotion places, but there was only a four-point gap between themselves and sixth spot. The one man we know is not going to be involved in the free kick is uh, Martin, but he's not really on his side, uh, slightly left of centre. So. Uh, What's your money on here, Ash? Is this going to be James Henry's? Or? Yeah, definitely. He's actually been out all week with a bag of balls practicing, so uh, we'll see if it pays off here. Bart Laird is shielding the ball from the uh, sight of both the goalkeeper and the, the defenders. Tony Craig is also shaping up, but he'd have to bend that some way if he was going to get it round with his left, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. This has got to be James Henry, you would think. 
The referee indicates it's time to take it. Here is James Henry. No shot in there. It's the goal. It's no one from there. Over nil with just over four minutes on the watch. A low free kick bent round the wall into the far corner. Luke Daniels with a despairing dive. Just the start the Lions wanted. Millwall 1, Tramir Rovers 0, as you picked it. And it's going to be taken by James Henry on this uh, near side. It's a curler. It's not a bad one either. And Steve Morrison was looking to get on the end of that. Mark Laird plays it back into the edge of the box. Now Morrison turns it across. There are two players there. And there's the chance. And there's the fucking goal. And it's Andy Frampton who heads home. Well, the Lions have started like a house on fire. Just seven goals scored prior to this afternoon, but now they've got two more in the space of eight minutes. Andy Frampton with a header from no more than six yards makes it no all two from their nil. The defender Logan does well, though, gets it to Goodison. The ball into uh, feet. They, they're trying to play the ball around here. Yeah, look at that one from me. And, well, they're trying to play the ball around, but they're giving it away far too often. Tramir Rose and just done exactly that. Mark Laird intercepts. Oh, we really can take full advantage here. They play it right. There's James Henry. He's got two in the middle. He crosses early, looking for Gary Owens rather than Morrison. And Steve Morrison makes it three 0 to Millwall with 22 minutes on the clock. A great cross from James Henry. And Steve Morrison scores his second goal for the Lions. It really is all over, and we're not halfway through the first half. It's Millwall 3, Tramir Rovers nil. They're, str they're struggling to get out of their own half effectively, aren't they, at the moment? They've got another throw down here. A little flick on there by uh, Ricketts. But as Ash was saying, uh, you, you sort of feel if Millwall perhaps could get one more, that the whole ceiling could come in on top of them. Here's James Henry breaking from deep through the middle. Has a go himself, and he has scored a goal. What a cracking run from James Henry from inside his own half. Just kept going and going, and then hit it low into the bottom corner. It's now, would you believe it, Millwall 4, Tranmere Rovers 0, with 27 minutes gone. Well, I'm looking at the team sheet here. I'm looking on the subs bench for Tranmere, and quite frankly, They've got nothing that can change it. They've got their most experienced players. And one of you out there on the pitch, you've got Alan Marm, perhaps a midfield player, and Gareth Eggs, who's, who's had a uh, spell pre-season with the Lions a few years back. But they're woeful. They're basically, they've got no cover to their defenders whatsoever. I think they lost heavily to Charlton as well. But um, funny, as I, was talk I was talking to John Barnes in the week, and he said... You know, we've really improved since then with the draw and the win, uh, draw against Colchester win on Tuesday night, he said, but I don't know what Tranmere team is going to turn up. And it's uh, it's the one that doesn't bother to play. Ball into the head, middle, head of Alexander, inches wide of the target, that could have been five. Well, basically, Mike Martin picked it up on the touchline, was allowed to take two touches, pick out a cross, and get Alexander on the penalty spot, completely unmarked, a free header, and he just drifted wide of the post. I mean... It's just basically schoolboy defending. Clearance uh, from Ford towards uh, Morrison. Goodison volleys it clear. Tony Craig wins the header. Schofield touches on. Morrison looking to get in here. Is there a foul there? He's off. The the he's off. Yeah, he's off. He is, I'm afraid. Marlon Brooms got the wrong side there of uh, Steve Morrison. Second yellow. He's gone. And he's uh, going to make the long walk down the tunnel. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate thing there. Once it bounced over the top, suddenly found himself the wrong side of Steve Morrison. So close to him, all he could do was just run into the back of him. So, Ashley, two goals for James Henry. Free kick just outside the penalty area. Who's going to take this? <laughs> no, Gary, Gary Alexander's just come over to try and get a look in, and he's absolutely no chance. <laughs> Well, James has had a quiet second half, hasn't he, really? Um, it was, uh, the ball was, was following him everywhere for about the first half an hour, but uh, we haven't seen much of him, but he, he would love to cap this game off with a, another goal. And uh, it's in a very good position for him to, uh, to get a free kick on target. Especially with the wall they've lined up, he's got no protection on that side. He's coming to have another look now, the goalkeeper. Now he's telling him to come round a bit more. But he's wide open to a ball around the outside of the wall. Hartlett again shielding uh, the ball. The referee 
happy that the wall is the requisite distance away. James Henry lines himself up, hits it through the wall, and it's in the back of the net. Now, will that be James Henry's goal? He's claiming it. I thought it might have come off somebody else's ankle, but it doesn't really matter. It's a hat trick for James Henry, and it's Millwall 5, Tranmere Rovers 0. Well, it's actually put it the opposite corner to what everyone was thinking. It was actually good thinking because the goalkeeper would set himself for that ball around the wall. He played it across to the other post. And he didn't make great contact, but there was enough of it to just trickle in. Yeah, obviously the other night I didn't have the best of games, but um, I just knuckled down uh, throughout the week and uh, I think today I showed everyone what I'm capable of and uh, really happy to get my uh, first hat-trick in my career. We had Ashley Grimes commentating with us. Uh, first free kick came up. I said, who's going to take this then? He said, James has been out there knocking balls in uh, for hours on end. He'll take this one. And, and sure enough, and you put it right in the far corner. Yeah, um, after the game the other night, I uh, came out early in the morning on, uh, on Thursday and uh, started practising again. And uh, luckily, two of them went in today. First one wasn't so good, but the second one was. I felt like I struck it quite well and gave him the eyes. Equally important was the two goals that you made, which were the second and third, as I remember. Uh, one was from a corner. Okay, it bounced around a bit before Framps headed it in, and then the one for Steve Morrison. You must have been pleased with that cross in particular. Yeah, the uh, the third goal was good. Good team move from everyone. Uh, I think it started through Laird and he put me in, and then uh, Steve's done brilliant to, to get on the end of it and head it down and uh, went in, went into the top corner in the end. So uh, it's a fantastic goal. I think that was probably the best of the day. Millwall would see plenty of Swindon Town before the season was out, but this first meeting between the two sides was a feisty encounter. It was Swindon who took the lead after 14 minutes. That header by Scott Cuthbert beating David Ford in spite of the keeper's protests. The home side were then reduced to 10 men. Jimmy Abdu evades one tackle, but then Jonathan Douglas gets him with a two-footed lunge and the referee, Mr Wright, has no alternative but to show him the red card. Fortunately, Jimmy was OK to continue, but the question was, could Millwall take full advantage of the extra man? The answer was no, because not long afterwards, it was Andy Frampton who incurred the referee's wrath with this challenge on John Paul McGovern, and he too took an early bath. Still a goal down, Millwall pressed forward in the hope that they could find an equaliser from somewhere. And when it arrived, it followed an excellent move. Scott Barron's ball into the box and nod down by Steve Morrison and there was a first goal in a Millwall shirt for Danny Schofield. At long last, Millwall's travel sickness came to an end after 13 away games without a victory. Paul Robinson was back after injury and he celebrated with the opening goal. From that point on though, it became the Neil Harris show. His first capitalising on a woeful back pass into the bottom corner left footed. Goal number two, a classic Harris strike, giving the keeper no chance with a side footed effort into the other corner. Once again, the striker's art in full evidence. The defenders have got no chance of catching him and he keeps his head to place it past the keeper. The third goal should have arrived from the penalty spot. A sweet turn brought to the ground and there was nobody else who was going to grab the ball. On this occasion, though, Chopper's aim wasn't true. Fon Williams making a comfortable save. But Harris wasn't to be denied his hat-trick. This, though, a scruffy effort from Steve Morrison's slide rule pass. Yeah, we're uh, struggling to hear each other because uh, there's such a noise uh, being made by uh, the fans of both sides. It's, uh, the 
Schofield tries to knock the ball forward. Chris Hackett does so. Good touch on there by Harrison. Here's Hackett into the penalty area, pulls it back. Schofield with a chance and his nicks away and out of play. And uh, with less than a minute on the watch, they will almost take the lead. It's going to be Chris Hackett who will take it. And will curl it in right footed. It's got a long way out! The marking was absolutely woeful. It's no more one leads United now. Puts the port out here from uh, Snodgrass. Gets a little one two going. Snodgrass back in possession. And uh, there's Beckford playing out on the right wing at the moment. Back into Snodgrass. Snodgrass up to the inside. And uh, danger here for Millwall. Shot takes a big deflection. Palmed away by. And then. Well, an important challenge in there by Tony Craig deflects the shot which came in from Snodgrass away for a corner, but that was a let off from Millwall. It'll be another out swinger, left footed. That one's got a lot more on it. There's the header, it's well blocked on the line, but there is the equalising goal, and it's knocked in by Patrick Kisnorbo from no more than six yards, and Millwall's lead lasted just seven minutes. Craig sorts it out, finds Alan Dunn. Dunn. Almost steps on the ball but gets himself out of trouble. And uh, now the ball should come out to this near side and find Jack Smith. Smith can run forward now. Looks for an option inside. Here is a shooting chance for Hackett. Low drive! Oh, just misses wide of the target. Good move from Millwall Moves. Yeah, the game's opened up a little bit now. I think Millwall's getting on top of the game. And the great chance with Chris Hackett there. Saves about 25 yards out. Just needs to get his shot on target. Smith prepared to bring it forward. Still Jack Smith on the ball, slots it into Harris in the edge of the box. It's all a bit tight, but he opens it out for Hackett again. On this right-hand side, lots of bodies in the box. It stood up deep to the far post, and there's the header! Oh, and somehow it's wide of the target, and I think it was the head of Tony Craig that put it there. But a lovely cross from Chris Hackett, and that was begging to be put in the net moods. Yeah, we're putting in some great cross. I think there's about three or four perfect crosses coming in. And uh, there's two on one at the back post there, and... Uh, Clear header, it should have been a goal. We'll play forward from Hackett again, whacked away by Kisnorbo. Header from Craig, Harris nods it down to Laird, now can Laird help it on, Spice Schofield, little, little touch, two players leave it to each other, ball out for Jack Smith, should just be kept in play, Smith's done well, he's gone past it, Schofield wants it pulled back to him, Schofield takes it under control, can he produce a cross, it's a great cross, Alexander! <laughs> Yeah, it's my first goal against Leeds and uh, what an atmosphere and what a time to score, Like uh, everyone's buzzing, including myself. It must have been frustrating for everybody not in the starting lineup because these are the sorts of games that, that you want to play in, but the reason for that is because all of a sudden the goals have started to flow from everybody in the team, so the competition for those front places is intensifying. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult when you're uh, placed on a bench in a game like this, but uh, that's part and parcel of the game, and when you get the chance to get on, you've got to be hungry to get on, and uh, lucky enough for me, something fell for me, and I managed to put it away, but uh, as you said, the competition's hotting up for places, and it's, it's, it can only be good for Millwall. All cleared. Uh this time with uh, plenty of distance by David Ford. Little header there from Morrison. Falls for Laird. Laird now. Here's Schofield with a chance. Oh, the shot saved. Ball back to uh, Danny Schofield again. Schofield twisting and turning, trying to create a bit of uh, space to get the crossing. Goes back to Jack Smith with it. Lovely curl on that one. Morrison with the header, but just scoops off the top of his head. And uh, Morrison does well to recover the ball. Knocks it inside for Chris Hackett. Still Millwall on the charge. Deep to the far post. Schofield looks for it. Nods it down. Harris can't turn it goalwards. Ball comes out to Jack Smith. He'll let fly. And that had plenty of venom on it as well. But it hits the defender. And Smith will just turn it around the corner back to Danny Schofield. Schofield back on the ball. I think he might have overrun that one. But Mark Laird's there as backup. Little ball inside. And uh, Millwall have given it away. And it's played forward, and now there's a, a chance at the other end for Colchester United. And Ford makes a brilliant save to deny Oda Jay. This one's uh, 
going to be whipped in left footed. That's taken a massive deflection and it's gone all the way in. And it seemed to happen in slow motion there. It was uh, whacked in low by Anthony Wordsworth, but it took a massive wicked deflection past uh, David Ford, who, who quite clearly didn't see it. And uh, with 18 minutes gone, it's Millwall nil, Colchester Wildwood towards Harris. Akungay clears it away. Dunn first to react to that, does well. Tries to slip it inside, and now Hackett on the right-hand side. He'll have it on his left foot. Low drive! Oh, Fizzler just wide of the target for Chris Hackett. Yeah, it was very unfortunate there because he got himself a good body shape, made a good connection, and uh, I think that took everyone by surprise that he hit, hit it with his left foot and it just drifted wide. Well, Laird again has made himself available for the short corner, but uh, Henry it is who plays it deep towards the far post. It's nodded away. Robinson was looking for it. Ball back with uh, Jimmy Abdu. Abdu puts in a flat cross looking towards Harris. Comes out to Mark Laird. Alan Dunn slings one in! to the back of the net, way past Ben Williams, despairing dive from the Colchester keeper, it's Millwall 1, Colchester 1, Alan Dunn's first goal of the season. Header from Robinson from the goal kick, nodded up in the air by Turney, Lair tries to help it forward, gets it to uh, James Henry, into Alan Dunn, nice little triangle on this right hand side, Henry now works himself a bit more space, tries to get Alan Dunn in, Alan Dunn's really done well, can he go all the way, Alan Dunn, slurs it back to Neil Harris, oh, and somehow the goalkeeper shame. saves it. What a shame, a fantastic piece of play from Alan Dunn, burst into the box after initially winning the ball, playing a one-two, squared the ball perfectly to Neil Harris, and unfortunately Neil just for once hit it straight into the goalkeeper's midriff. Can we have uh, another dramatic finish? James Henry has uh, set Paul Robinson in the wall, being uh, pushed and shoved. Henry then, uh, with the yellow boots, hits it! And it's... Yeah! And James Henry, in injury time, has probably scored the win for Millwall! The goalkeeper really should have done a little bit better. It falls into the far corner of the net from James Henry. It's Millwall 2, Colchester United 1. And I'll tell you what, James Henry can wear any colour boots he likes if he can keep producing like that. Abdu into Laird, back to Jimmy Abdu once more. The ball played back to uh, Tony Craig, who delivers it in towards Neil Harris. Harris slightly pushed there. Steve Morrison over the top, Harris could be in here. Still new Harris, and he opens the score for Millwall. Good interchange there between Steve Morrison and Neil Harris. And it's Harris who just opens his body out and rifles the ball past. James Pullen left-footed for his 11th goal of the season. It's Millwall 1, AFC Wimbledon 0. Chris Hackett hits it in again. That's all, all the way in off the line. Jason Price, though, gets the rebound, and I think that probably is the end of Brave Wimbledon's resistance. It was a great free kick, and uh, Jason Price comes towards the world heavyweight champion, David Hay, punching in the air, as if to say, I can punch my weight as well. It's Millwall 2, AFC Wimbledon 0. Chris Hackett gets the ball back, Alan Dunn boots it forward. <laughs> it's a series of ricochets and touches. Now a ball towards the edge of the penalty here. Alan Dunn may have been guilty of a foul on Duncan there. Chance here for Wimbledon. And they've got to go back. Well, it's Lewis Taylor who gets it, cutting in from the left-hand side. And maybe we were a little premature in suggesting this game was over. It's Millwall 2, Wimbledon 1. Peels for offside. Robinson wins the header. Not quite as far as uh, Neil Harris. Hackett going to close down. Alan Dunn takes the ball on his chest. Could go long now towards Jason Price over the top. That's the direction it goes. Schofield is backing up. Edge of the box. Can Schofield find himself a shooting chance? He does! That is the end. Danny Schofield rifles it into the top corner. It's Millwall 3, Wimbledon 1. And it's the Lions who will be going to Staines in round two. Ball laid uh, across square. Everybody's inside the Millwall half at the moment. Neil Harris is uh, running forward in case there is a breakaway, though. 
being watched and that's uh, an interception there by Schofield and now it's three against one Jason Price is available on this right hand side ball into Price chance for four and there is the fourth goal Price is second Schofield it is who lays it on a plate for him and as Wimbledon commit players forward in search of a, a second goal they will bury them with a fourth yes and it all came about really because Probably the best player, Taylor, was left back all on his own on the halfway line. He got hold of the ball, started to come in field, and suddenly realised he was being closed down with very little options. Kenny Jackett had won the Manager of the Month award for October, so the alarm bell should have been ringing when the Lions returned to league action at Brentford. The Bees took an early lead after just nine minutes when John Bostock, on loan from Spurs, fired low past David Ford. Millwall's equaliser was scored by Captain Courageous, Paul Robinson throwing himself at the ball to convert Chris Hackett's corner. Brentford's second goal on 25 minutes also came from a corner kick, but this one was certainly wind-assisted as Bostock's floater breezed past Jason Price and David Ford at the near post. As the second half wore on, it looked like the manager of the month hoodoo would strike until James Henry produced an amazing free kick from 25 yards to make it 2-2. 10 out of 10 for the goal, slightly less for the celebration. to Laird. Needs to move the ball perhaps the other way, but uh, he does that now. Good play by Mark Laird. Finds Andy Crampton. Can't quite take the ball in his stride. Now to Schofield, edge of the box. Schofield gets himself into a shooting position and brings the five safe from Shearer. That's better. Well, it was, and if he'd have got across the goal, Jason Price uh, doing his usual thing. He's not When he's not involved in the build-up play, Price, he, he's able to get himself in the box into good areas. And again, there, he was the only man arriving in the middle. And, Here's the corner for Wickham over on that far side. There's the header, and that's in the back of the net! Well, a header, we said it might be coming. It's Chris Westwood who got his head on, on it. Uh, Wickham Wanderers can't believe it. David Ford takes the uh, free kick, but uh, Price is beaten to it. And uh, Wickham trying to break on this near side, and this is a chance, is it, for 2 0? Betsy's in the area, and Betsy does make it 2-0. Well, no all caught out there, and Kevin Betsy kept his cool, drew David Ford, and they just rolls it into the net. It's Millwall nil with the Wanderers 2. After the shock of that home defeat to Wickham Wanderers, the Lions squandered another two points at St James's Park. Millwall went in front from the penalty spot after 21 minutes when Dave Martin was brought down in the box before picking himself up to score past Andy Marriott. Things should have become even easier for the visitors when Steve Tully was sent off for an ugly challenge on Andy Frampton seven minutes into the second half. But Millwall wasted several chances to increase their lead and were made to pay two minutes from time when Adam Stansfield's hopeful cross drifted over David Ford's head and into the back of the net for the equaliser. Thanks Robinson and Ward forward. Hackett takes. Deep to Robinson. Oh, it's found a way in! Brown. Jackson 
Robinson. They got across now. Is that a foul by Robinson? Yes. Penalty. Robinson, the goal scorer, just bundled Richard Butler to the ground. Chaban. 1-1. We'll now have the uh, corner taken. Roger East is our referee tonight. Hackett whips it in, but it's uh, too close to the first defender on the near post. He gets a second chance, gets more height on that one. It's better Frampton, and Andy Frampton scores the opening goal for Millwall. Perfectly weighted cross there from uh, Hackett at the second attempt. And Andy Frampton unmarked at the near post to place his header past Willy Geray and give Millwall a deserved lead. It's Millwall 1, MK Dons 0. Morrison gets another good flick on and get, wins another free kick. They want to take it quickly, Schofield is through, he's not offside, he's fairly wide here. Schofield, can he find the angle? Geray makes the save, ball pulled back, and there's the second goal from Chris Hackett. Millwall 2 to the good. Quick free kick taken there by Millwall. Schofield, first shot was blocked there by Willie Geray, but Martin returns it in, kept his head, laid it square, Chris Hackett side foots home, it's Millwall 2, MK Dons 0. Alan Dunn plays it up towards Steve Morrison, we'd all love to see Steve score, he's made a good contribution in this game, but he desperately needs a goal, but now there's a break on for MK Dons as Jermaine Easter tries to make his way into the area, and Jermaine Easter pulls a goal back in the first minute of the second half. He cut inside, and just as Andy Frampton went to close him down, he pulled the trigger from 20 yards. Paul Robinson gets the ball down and opens play out to Hackett on this near side. Hackett goes over the top. Now can Morrison get in here? Tries a shot first time, and Willie Geray turns it away. Oh, desperate for Steve to get that ball in. He took a really good shot. And again, Geray, with good hands, managed to... Just managed to palm it over the crossbar. But again, between the two centre halves, Steve managed to outpace them. Long free kick taken by Geray, and again Robinson would seem to be fouled. But here's Easter on the edge of the penalty area, and there's the equalising goal into the top corner. Well, I thought Paul Robinson was fouled, but when the ball broke to Jermaine Easter, you just felt that was going to happen. Head of forward once more, helped on by Graben. Now Morrison into the penalty area. Is there a chance for Steve Morrison to win it? There it is! Steve Morrison finally gets the goal he's been after. And it could prove to be the winner here at the den. Lovely little ball through. Steve Morrison keeps his head. Toe pokes it past Willy Geray into the far corner. It's Millwall 3, MK Dons 2. Into December, and Mill was still having problems away from home. At Victoria Park, they actually dominated the first 11 minutes, but after Steve Morrison had hit the crossbar, it was Peter Hartley who put the home side in front with this bobbling effort. Morrison again struck the woodwork at one end, but poor defending at the other cost Millwall dearly. This time it was Adam Boyd who was allowed to waltz into the box and slot home the second. The third goal arrived on the half hour, and this time it was the Icelandic striker Armand Bjornsson who stole in at the far post to find the back of the net. With two thirds of the game remaining, the result already appeared beyond doubt. Kenny Jacket admitted this was a woeful display. Staines will be very, very happy with this situation at the moment. Nil-nil. Millwall a little bit frustrated. Grimes chases the ball forward. Schofield picks it up, knocks it inside. Morrison goes past the defender, real chance for Steve Morrison! And there is the opening goal! And Morrison has scored it! <coughs> of the match winner last Tuesday here against MK Johns and he took it very, very well indeed. Here he is on the ball again, lays it out to Laird, back out to Schofield on the far side. Grimes making himself available again on the edge of the box, here he is, oh, that time he miscontrolled it. But uh, Morrison's got it back, Steve Morrison lays it through, Jack Smith not offside, left foot drive, and there's the second goal and Jack Smith's first for the club. 
Well, in the end, it was uh, a little bit of fortune as the ball broke to Steve Morrison on the edge of the penalty area. Jack Smith was up supporting the attack. Morrison just laid it through, and the uh, left back drills it low under the goalkeeper, and it's now Millwall 2 stains nil. They will have two in the six-yard box and four coming from deeper. Frampton and uh, Robinson included. There's Same. the ball in there, there's the header! And it's Alan Dunn who gets the goal. Header at the near post. And uh, really, it was just not picked up at all. Here's uh, Lewis Graben. Schofield, back to uh, Mark Laird. Laird into Boulder. Boulder was caught, <laughs> no will have a free kick. They wanted to take it quickly, they do take it quickly. Now Schofield's in, can it be four now? Danny Schofield, yes it is, it's all over. No all four, Staines Town nil. The referee on that occasion allows the quick free kick to be taken. And uh, it's Danny Schofield who just side puts it into the back of the net. Also playing from left to right, kicking towards the cold blow lane end in this first half. Darren Byfield is inside the six-yard box. Looks like it's going to be Till who will take the corner. An out-swinging right-footed uh, corner kick. And it's gone a long way, there's the volley and there's the opening goal for uh, Walsall. And uh, I think it's the big number five, uh, number six, Manny Smith, who's got it. Here's Dave Martin, far side. Ball into Ashley Grimes. Grimes takes a touch, slips it through to Schofield. Schofield left edge of the penalty area, being forced wide again. Has support from Martin. First time cross comes in, again it's headed away by Smith. Back to Jack Smith. Now to Laird. Laird square to Alan Dunn. He can hit him from this distance. Alan Dunn! Oh, what a fizzer! Just wide of the target. Very reminiscent of the position he was in against Colchester United, where he burst the back of the net. And that one was well hit, kept fairly low as Dave Martin hugging the touchline, but he's gone diagonal towards Schofield, headed away by Dwayne Smith. It was between Schofield and uh, Morrison. It's now whacked up in the air. Header breaks for Alan Dunn, who plays it forward high towards Morrison. Gets a bit of a flick on, little chest off. Here's Morrison, can he get there? Steve Morrison! That's the equalising goal! Great interplay there by Ashley Grimes and Steve Morrison. And didn't he take it well? Chested it down, waxed it into the far corner, and Clayton Ince didn't move. It's no all one, also one. As Parkin leaps and gets a little flick onto Byfield. Forward ball from uh, Frampton to Price. Offside flag will go up. No, it won't! Steve Morrison is in the clear here, keeps his head, and buries it into the back of the net! And no one have got the lead! Well, it was a good flick forward. Morrison beats the offside track, but the uh, cool way he chested it down and buried it into the top right-hand corner, giving Millwall a 2-1 lead was the pick of the, uh, the move, really. It's Millwall 2, Walsall 1. To say that this meeting with Charlton Athletic was long-awaited is something of an understatement. The first time the two had faced each other in a league fixture in almost 15 years was celebrated by Millwall and Charlton combining to support the Street Violence Ruins Lives campaign in support of the Knox and Mizzen families. As the teams took to the field, a crowd of 19,000 were in good voice in spite of the chilly conditions. Once the preliminaries were out of the way, it was a case of sit back and enjoy a real Christmas cracker. In spite of their poor away form to date, Millwall were on fire from the start of this game and Steve Morrison's persistence paid off as he scored the opening goal. feature of Steve's play throughout the season was his willingness to chase down lost causes and once again he got his reward. The second goal was also scored by Morrison and this really should have put Millwall in the box seat. Yes that was a right footer from Andy Frampton and when it came back off the post there was Morrison, a real poacher's finish. With Millwall then coasting, albeit in the first half, suddenly a refereeing decision or two changed the picture completely. 
Andy Frampton claimed that he got the ball in that challenge on David Mooney, but referee Mike Jones had other ideas. In spite of the defender's protests, it was a penalty kick. Even looking at it again in slow motion, it's not clear that Frampton played the man rather than the ball. It was Dion Burton who had the responsibility from the penalty spot and he reduced the arrears. If the referee's decision earlier was controversial, the second was bewildering. Some comedy defending from the Lions contributed to their own downfall, but once the ball had rebounded from the post, in comes Jimmy Abdu to make a fine challenge. Much to his dismay though, not only is Mr Jones pointing to the penalty spot again, but he shows Jimmy a red card. The fact that that decision was later rescinded was of no consolation to the Lions because they were down to ten men and facing another penalty. Burton again was entrusted with the responsibility and he sent David Ford the wrong way. Into the second half and in spite of a man disadvantage, the Lions were still on top for long periods. But Charlton then produced an excellent goal to take the lead for the first time. As the cross is headed out, there's the volley coming in from Nicky Bailey and David Ford has no chance with that whatsoever. who will continue to show great resilience in the face of adversity and deservedly levelled on 78 minutes. The move started on the left-hand side with Dave Martin. Now watch him as he continues to drift across. Alan Dunn gets to the byline and whips the ball in. At the second attempt, there's Martin from the acutest of angles to make it 3-3. It was certainly a long run but Dave wanted to go all the way to celebrate with the 3,000 Lions fans behind the goal at the other end. You certainly couldn't take your eye off this one for a minute and Charlton found themselves in front once more with just six minutes remaining. Steve Morrison, yes it was him, but in the wrong end this time he just couldn't see that ball coming and it looked as though Norwell's best endeavours would go unrewarded into injury time and would there just be one more chance for the Lions. The move starts out on the left-hand side with Jack Smith. Steve Morrison battles for possession and eventually the ball worms its way clear to Danny Schofield who keeps his head and drills low past Elliott into the bottom corner. Charlton 4, Millwall 4, what a remarkable game. Let's just have one more look at the goal that certainly made Scoey a Millwall hero. There's coolness personified as he fires low to give Millwall a well-deserved point. Yeah, I, I felt it was a good performance. I mean, I, I talked uh, before the game uh, to, to our players about, you know, some of our away performances or most of our away performances have, have lacked uh, uh, some sort of competition, uh, commitment a bit of spikiness and passion and um, you can never guarantee a result as a, as a footballer but you can guarantee a performance and you know we've had some pretty limp performances away from home that wasn't the case today um, we, we competed all the way we played some good football we were a, a threat to Charlton and uh, in terms of the actual performance I was pleased today it was more like one of my teams and, and it was more like ourselves it just goes to show the character of the team and um, the desire and commitment um, on the goal on my equaliser, I think um, Steve caused problems with the two centre halves like he did all game. I thought it was brilliant. And then um, the ball just kind of dropped for me. Um, sort of faked a shoot, the defender's gone to the ground, took it round him. And then um, first, first off, looked to square it. No one, I didn't really see no one clear, so I just sort of hit it hard and low. And I think it just sort of um, crept under the keeper. I think we deserved that point, definitely. Maybe deserved all three, but probably looking on the overall um, point was well deserved. Um, massive game something we can build on now for the next two games. After that performance at the Valley, hopes were high that Millwall could get something from Carrow Road on Boxing Day, where they faced the high-flying Canaries. But again they were made to pay for early missed opportunities, and it was Wes Houlihan who put Norwich in front on 28 minutes. If 
If Millwall have prolific strikers in the shape of Neil Harris and Steve Morrison, Norwich City have one of their own. Grant Holt's 20th goal of the season this was before the new year. for uh, Jason Price who had a foot rock quite high towards his head now Jimmy Abdu gets it down now he goes to ground referee says stand up and uh, there's a break on on the far side now with uh, Swallow for Bristol Rovers attacking Jack Smith Smith uh, getting some help from Mark Laird but still the attack is going Kafur and Kafur puts it in against the post and it will just scramble it clear it's a goal kick in the end and what a let off that was for the Lions Chris Hackett can bring it clear for Millwall, up to Morrison. Morrison tries to get the better of Lescott. Chris Lescott complains that Morrison went in a little bit late on him. Dave Martin wins the ball back now, Lewis Grabben. He's going to try for goal himself. Oh, and fizzes one just wide. I'm sorry, that was the wrong option. Steve Morrison but completely unmarked to the right of him. He should have just fed him in there because both the centre-backs ran at Lewis there to try and block the shot and he just had to feed the man into the side of him. He's just making those right decisions. The referee's allowed play to continue. I'm not sure that everybody's quite aware of that. They've got a runner in on the left-hand side, Campbell. Being closed down now by Smith, but he's got the cross in deep. Frampton was out of position but did brilliantly to get his head on it. And now Martin can uh, bring it clear. Grabber makes a run into the channel for him, should uh, open things out a little bit, and Martin goes for a great diagonal ball to Morrison. Can he take it in his stride? Steve Morrison into the penalty area, he goes, and throws it into the back of the net, and Millwall have the lead. A superb crossfield ball by Dave Martin, but there was still a lot of hard work there for Steve Morrison to do. He chested it inside, he looped it over the defender, and he crashed it into the back of the net. It's Millwall 1, Bristol Rovers 0. Still very well taken in the corner, if he can keep it there. We're into the last minute of added on time. And Andy Frampton's busting a gut to get back into possession, into position. Break with uh, on this near side. Chance for Campbell to deliver a ball. Tony Craig! Ooh, Tony Craig was beaten in the air there by, I think it was Lines, well, I think but the ball, he didn't get enough on it. Well, it was Lines coming at the back, he went into the back of Craig, and I think he just hit Lines in the chest, which meant there was no momentum to the ball going forward, and gratefully just fell into the arms of uh, David Fold. And Lewis Graben gets onto a loose ball, now he could go into the corner with it. And use up some valuable time, he wants a bit of help now, he's not got a lot there, plays it inside to... Uh, Chris Hackett, Hackett slots it for Morrison. Chance here for Steve Morrison, and the ball goes off the defender, and Millwall have got a second goal. Eventually, it's P Pat Baldwin who got the final touch. Morrison's low shot, the keeper parried it into the shins there of Pat Baldwin, who couldn't get out the way of it. It's Millwall 2, Bristol Rovers 0. The league table at the start of January suggested that Leeds United were over the hills and far away, 20 points ahead of Mill with a game in hand, but certainly the playoffs were well within the Lions' grasp. Millwall have been drawn against championship outfit Derby County in the third round of the FA Cup, providing an opportunity for Kenny Jackett's men to measure their progress against a side from the division above. The Lions certainly caused problems for Nigel Clough's men and defender Jack Smith got forward to good effect on a number of occasions. Derby were always dangerous on the break, with Chris Commons in particular a constant threat. Paul Robinson was on hand to clear this effort from the Rams number 10. On balance, Millwall deserved to get their noses in front and did so four minutes into the second half when a move started on the left by Smith saw Hackett produce a pinpoint cross onto the head of Lewis Graben for his first goal of the season. Sadly, the lead lasted only a couple of minutes as Millwall failed to clear their lines and that man Commons was perfectly placed to drill the ball low past David Ford. Millwall responded strongly in the latter stages and were unlucky not to score again when Steve Morrison saw his header cleared off the line and when the ball eventually came to him a second time, he was denied by resolute Derby defending. 
So one all the final score, meaning it was up to Pride Park for a replay. The first 90 minutes of the replay finished goalless, but in extra time Millwall began to get the upper hand. Scott Barron was desperately unlucky not to give the Lions the lead when his stunning 25-yard effort came back off the post. The deadlock was finally broken in the 108th minute when Steve Morrison reacted quickest after his header from Chris Haggett's corner rebounded back off the woodwork. Four minutes later, though, the Rams were level through Stephen Davis, who found space in the Millwall box to loft the ball over David Ford. With neither side able to find a crucial winner, the tie went to penalties. Stephen Bywater was to prove the Derby hero, saving Danny Schofield's spot kick. Before Dean Moxie converted the fifth penalty for Nigel Clough's men, sending the championship side through to the fourth round. Alan Dunn's going round the other way, but the ball is laid in left-footed, headed clear. Abdu tries to get onto it quickly. Schofield and Abdu both together. Ball back to Scott Barron. Barron into Schofield again. Plenty of bodies in the box. Good cross too. Looking for maybe Steve Morrison. Comes out. Alan Dunn drills it. Fine save. Chance for the equalizer. Oh, ball, and the ball ricochets. It was ball came out to Lewis Graben, and uh, Kelvin Davis made a second save. And uh, in the end, it's a goal kick, I think. Paul Robinson and um, Darren Ward have dealt very well with Ricky Lambert so far this afternoon. <laughs> Headed by Morrison, doesn't quite go where he intended, but it's been picked up now by Schofield again. Schofield adjusts his position, no shot! Oh! Inches wide of the target, that's going to be a corner. The referee well, gave a goal kick there. Well, he didn't see what happened right at the last. Kelvin Davis managed to just put some fingertips on it because he just sort of timed his dive right till the last because it seemed to be going past him. And just at the last, he got out an arm and just tipped it wide. Here is the delivery. It's a deep one to the far post. And there's the header back across. And can someone get on the end of it? Oh, it's volleyed over by Lewis Graben. Everything, well, everything's falling to Lewis Graben, unfortunately. Yeah, well, well, you can't blame Lewis because he had all the bodies in front of him. So what he's tried to do is lift it into the roof of the net. And it's just, again, a matter of inches over the top rather than underneath. Well, Lambert's going to try for distance. It's 30 yards at least. He's going to go for it. It takes a big deflection, and it's in. Well, Ricky Lambert will claim it. Southampton have won it right at the death. It took a big deflection, sent David Ford the wrong way, and I'm afraid justice has not been done. You could just see it coming, though, by the way the game had gone. They haven't actually had a shot on target in the second half. I don't think they've actually had a shot, to be truthful. But you just know the way we wasn't confident when we set it up. We was almost setting it up that we were going to regain possession. The wall wasn't properly set. It just deflected off them. And Foldy basically got himself rooted to the spot. Neil Harris plays the ball back to Alan Dunn. Time is against Millwall now. They need an immediate response. Ball into uh, Trotter on the edge of the area. Still Liam Trotter. Yes! 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 Liam Trotter levels it right away. Well, how about that on his Millwall debut? On his second loan spell, Liam Trotter into the bottom corner. They fall behind and within 30 seconds, they're back level. It's Millwall 1, Southampton 1. And that was great courage from Liam Trotter there. He could have panicked on his wrong foot and lashed at it. Just kept his composure once he got in there. Sidestepped the defender and just rolled it monstrously into the other corner. This was Millwall's second away win of the season and it was a hard-fought victory courtesy of a disputed penalty. Referee Andy Haynes appeared not to see the incident clearly when Steve Morrison went sprawling in the box after tangling with Sean Gregan. He allowed play to continue until he spotted his assistant flagging furiously. The replay clearly shows what the linesman had spotted, with the Latic skipper dragging Steve to the ground. Neil Harris made Gregan pay and his penalty was enough to earn the Lions all three points.
ball back with Jack Smith up to Chris Hackett. Hackett plays it towards back. Back does well. He flicked it away. Now that should have been a free kick, surely, because he was obstructed there. Yeah, but he didn't roll on the floor. Referee waves play on though as the ball's through to Steve Morrison on the edge of the penalty area. Morrison thinks about a shot, tries a shot, takes a deflection. Jack Smith on the volley. Mindful for Schofield. Flag's not up. That's the opening goal of the game for Millwall. Danny Schofield with a left foot shot. Jack Smith with a missed kick. And Schofield puts it into the back of the net. Milden Hall looks to the linesman. The uh, South End players surround the referee but it wasn't offside, and Danny Schofield, in injury time at the end of the first half, puts Millwall in front, it's Millwall 1, South End 0. Now, Sean back, Oop, missed control slightly over on the far side, ball goes out of play. Yeah, I don't know how much football Sean Back's had this season, I don't think he's started too many games this season, so he may sort of, the enthusiasm and the adrenaline gets you so far. And well, here he in. goes now, he's uh, going to have to go on his own again, through the middle, Sean Back. Can he work himself a shooting chance? And he's got his debut! Sean Back makes it 2-0 Millwall and didn't he take that well? He was onto it in a flash. He cut inside two defenders, curls it into the far corner. Millwall 2 South End now. Free kick. Uh, we'll look at Sean Back there, who's uh, available for it. He's come right out to that far side, but he's rather good in everybody's way. Here's uh, the cross coming in from uh, Schofield. There's the header from oh, Robinson. How did that miss? Well, basically, we had three players queuing up at the back post to head it in. Robbo in the middle of them. I think uh, Darren Ward and Liam Trotter were there, and Robbo got the faintest of touches, and everyone just thought he was going to hit the back of the net, and it just drifted wide of the post. Freezing January temperatures on the south coast meant this game was in doubt until the last minute. However, the efforts of the Withding ground staff ensured that it got the go-ahead. Steve Morrison had reason to be most pleased about that as he kept his cool to score the winning goal for Millwall, capitalising on Adam Virgo's defensive blunder. The striker on target just four minutes into the second half. The Lions' recent record against Bryson has not been the best, but a combination of determined defending and a little good fortune ensured that Kenny Jackett's men came away with the three points on this occasion. It's very central. It's two or three yards outside the penalty area. David Forge got to get his wall absolutely spot on. Who is it is going to take this one? Is it going to be Houlihan, possibly? They're all uh, lined up for it now. Houlihan would be the left footer, possibly. The shot comes in and it's in the back of the net and it wasn't Houlihan. It was knocked in there straight away by the uh, number 16, Chris Martin, the man who was fouled on the edge of the box. And it was a perfectly placed free kick. Chris Hackett will take the corner from the far side, so it'll swing out this time. Not a bad one. Robinson, oh, uh, Craig was looking for it. It's headed away back out to Hackett, who just keeps it in play. Barron's made a good run forward. It's on his uh, right foot, and he just tries to cut inside, and in the end, he has to settle for a throw. But he has got the option, or oh, he just throws it short. Now, here's uh, Scott Barron in towards the edge of the area. Lays it back. Will come all the way out to Tony Craig. He could get a shot in, and Tony Craig! to the back of the net, it's Millwall 1, Norwich 1. Now, if Trotter comes in and wins a good challenge, Dunn will help out and Hackett will just uh, play a long ball forward up towards Graben. Graben beat to that one by Nelson. And Scott Barron has got to chase it to uh, try and catch up with Russell Martin, and Martin's gone away from him here, he's gone a long way, Russell Martin, towards the edge of the box, tries a shot, and in the end, a great save by David Ford, but the right back, Russell Martin, went on a 50-yard run there, Scott Barron heads it back, helped up by Trotter, Harris just thought about it, and the ball is nicked away, but now Tony Craig plays it into Harris, he tries a little flick round the corner towards Scott Barron, that'll roll out for the corner. Yeah, it's a good play there by Scott because he tried to burst in behind, put the defender under pressure, take him free quick, quickly. In it comes, and there's the header from Harris! And it's in the back of the net, and Neil Harris with the goal! Well, what a quickly 
taken free kick. Hackett curls the ball in, and Neil Harris with his 13th goal of the season just nods it past Fraser Forster. Millwall 2, Norwich 1. Craig will now go longer towards Morrison. Trotter's got himself in a decent position, but he was spotted there by Lappin. And Lappin just uh, hoiks it clear, only as far as Chris Hackett. Hackett gets it down, hits one! Oh, and a fizzler just over the bar. That was so unlucky, because it just sat nicely for him to hit the volley, and it went no more than six inches over the top. A uh, good 20 to 25 yards out, caught it really sweetly. It just didn't quite dip early enough. Yeah, they're playing with three centre-backs and then five or six men in midfield. Well, of course, if we play three direct strikers up against their three centre-backs, that gives them a problem then. Here's Chris Hackett. Let's hope it does. Ball back out to Alan Dunn. Alan Dunn puts a low cross in. It takes a deflection off a defender. He'll put it in again left-footed this time. Morrison leaves for it! Oh, a brilliant save by Andy Marriott! That seemed to be heading for the top corner, but somehow or other, Marriott leapt to uh, turn that away. Here's the corner kick then to be taken by Chris Hackett on that far side. Four Millwall players, three inside the six-yard box, another four poised to come from deeper. Not a bad one. It's a chance there and a tip over this time, and it was Sean Bat with the header, and Marriott is a busy boy, Terry. Yeah, and it's quite funny because uh, Alan Dunn actually spoke, I saw him on the local papers in midweek, about how he's enjoyed getting forward at corner kicks and, and getting on the end of a few of them and there we were, first corner kick Danny's in there with the nod on and Sean back from no more than four or five yards he got the second touch but again Marriott was alert enough to tip it over Interception by Alan Dunn who will rampage forward he's got Morrison outside him here Steve just hangs back and uh, waits to be the ball to be delivered, puts in a good cross, coming in a far post to Sean Bat, and somehow Marriott makes the save. Marriott didn't have a clue there, he just fell on the ball, it stuck between his legs, and he lay on the goal line with the ball stuck there until he was able to sort of sit up and then pick it up. They've been banging and banging on that door, and they haven't been able to knock it down yet, and time is running out. Now there's another exit, a player in trouble, there's going to be another booking. Yeah, this time it's uh, Kozic who's going to be booked. Not sure who got the original yellow card there. I think it was Taylor, the centre-back. But I think Rob and Waldy have stood in front of the centre of their wall and uh, Kozic decided, no, I don't like that, and just basically pushed Waldy in the back. The question is, what can Neil Harris see of the goal here? Not a great deal. So you get it on target, and if not, somebody get on a rebound. Harris then takes one step, takes it, and it's... made his 300th start for the Lions. We said it was going to take a bit of magic to break the deadlock here with a matter of three or four minutes to go to full time. And Neil Harris has done the job. It's Millwall 1, Exeter City now. Darren Ward with a cushioned header down. Alan Dunn. Oh, oh come on, what was a poor challenge. challenge. That was a poor challenge, I'm afraid. But that's a red oh, card. Get off. That was a shocking challenge. If Barry Corr has to go. Yeah, Corr's accepted it, some of his teammates haven't, but that was a poor challenge. Millwall's five-game winning run came to an end at, of all places, Adams Park. The chairboys had already inflicted one defeat on the Lions this season, and this bizarre goal from Julian Kelly on his Wickham debut was enough to give the home side all three points here. Millwall had more than enough chances to have won this game themselves. This header from Sean Batt hitting the crossbar. As the Lions piled forward in the second half, surely a goal had to come. Alan Dunn was sent sprawling in the box, but then when Batt went down, the referee pointed to the penalty spot. Neil Harris, usually so trusty from 12 yards on this occasion, just couldn't find the back of the net. Then came controversy as once again Gareth Ainsworth came into contact with Tony Craig. Earlier in the season, Craig ended up wearing a mask after a collision with Ainsworth. This time there was a clear elbow and Craig was left prostrate on the floor. After the melee had died down, the referee told Ainsworth exactly what he saw and the Wickham man was shown the red card.
After that shock against Wickham, Millwall bounced back in some style at Stadium MK some three days later. Facing one of their promotion rivals, Danny Schofield picked the perfect time to produce this spectacular strike. The Dons weren't really in the game, but out of nowhere they produced this effort from Aaron Wilbraham, which beat David Ford with the aid of a wicked deflection. Normal service was soon resumed, however, from this Chris Hackett free kick. This, of course, a goal of a season contender from Neil Harris. As he will tell you, there's no such thing as a bad goal. The scoreline really didn't tell the true story at this stage, but Harris made the game safe a little later with this slightly better effort from some 12 yards, beating his former teammate, Willie Garay. Having already settled one tight game from a pinpoint free kick, Harris was at it again against Hartlepool United. 20 yards is certainly his range, and if this wasn't quite as clean a strike as against Exeter, it was enough to do the job. Who will have Chopper's dad to thank for that? He used to tell his son, you need to take more of those free kicks. Newell could have made the game safe a lot earlier. This cross from Chris Hackett again finding Harris, that header just inches over the bar. The quality of Hackett's crossing is not in any doubt, and he can also take a wicked free kick himself, as he was about to prove. This one all of 30 yards out, and it took a superb save from Scott Flinders in the Hartlepool goal to keep the scoreline down to one. This game at Walsall didn't quite go to plan. After just 12 minutes, a Millwall attack broke down and Troy Deeney's long clearance split the Lions' defence, allowing Alex Nichols to fire a low shot into the bottom corner. Worse was to follow before the half-hour mark when Richard Taundry thumped home Walsall's second goal, leaving Kenny Jackett's men with a mountain to climb. Fortunately, the persistence of Steve Morrison was once again rewarded when he capitalised on hesitation between former Lion Jamie Vincent and Sadler's keeper René Gilmartin to steer the ball into an empty net. The visitors might have levelled before half-time had this angle drive from Tony Craig not found the outside of the post. Millwall's chances were given a further boost on 68 minutes when Matt Richards was shown a second yellow card following a clumsy challenge on Chris Hackett. But the Lions had to wait until the 93rd minute for the second goal which would earn them a point. It was certainly worth that wait as Alan Dunn produced a stunning goal of the season to maintain his side's promotion push. It's a long way to Carlisle for a Tuesday night fixture, but the 231 Lions fans who made the trip had no complaints after this display. The first goal was Route 1, Ford's kick, Bat's flick and Steve Morrison's chip. The striker's second goal owed a little to the misjudgment of Carlisle keeper Adam Collin, who came for a cross he had no chance of reaching, enabling Steve to place his header into the empty net. The Lions should have been coasting to victory, but an injury time effort from Danny Livesey somehow squirmed across the line, despite the best efforts of David Ford and Jimmy Abdu to keep it out. Oh. 
but there was still time for another goal. Fortunately, it went Millwall's way as Morrison's rampaging run down the left ended with an unselfish pass for Danny Schofield to slot home the Lions' third. take the corner from the other side this time and uh, it won't be a short one he'll swing it out can he find a blue head it's done Ward and no one in front and Ward gets his first goal of the season a lovely out swinging corner from Chris Hackett Ward gets his head to it and the ball creeps into the far corner past Rob Elliott it's no one one top nil He's been very good today at getting in between Chris Hackett and Alan Dunn, so they've not been able to be so effective as they normally are. Hackett facing the wrong way, gives it to Alan Dunn, in towards Sean Back. Back gets a flick on. Morrison tries a volley and uh, wouldn't have gone in anyway. Elliot dives away to his left hand side, and made the save. Yeah, it seemed a strange choice from where he was to hit the volley because he had lots of time and space to take a touch and maybe do something else. but chose to take it early and even then the ball's going wide but the goalkeeper chose to dive and make a save. Ford with the clearance again it's uh, got a bit of spin on it again Chris Hackett gets there it's helped forward again by Morrison he might get a second chance ball hits him for a third chance now Harris plays it out to Hackett only Harris really in the box can Hackett come inside he's done really well Chris Hackett what can he deliver now ball across the middle <laughs> to Neil Harris but then especially to Chris Hackett there's... now here come Millwall again it's four on four as Hackett breaks he's got Harris out one side oh he went the wrong way he went towards Morrison Harris was the easy ball Some as if we're desperate to get Steve Morrison involved as it were and again there it was such a simple ball to Neil Harris and another play oh they give it away can he find Morrison and on the right hand side of the penalty area Morrison steadies himself Harris! He got, he got away with something there. Now it's into Neil Harris. Harris on to Hackett. Chance here. here. Hackett! Oh! The keeper makes a save. Morrison's still there with a chance. Yeah! Steve Morrison makes it four for Millwall. Well, Hackett's first effort was flawed, but Charles weren't alive to the danger. Morrison kept his cool, takes it on his chest, and drills it low. And they look at this consulate once Charles has it. Yeah, it's a fantastic day all round, isn't it? Um, Great crowd. I don't know if it was uh, as many as they thought was going to be here or not, but um, yeah, it's fantastic and uh, to score another two goals against Charlton and a 4 0 win. It's a great day all round. You've suddenly again hit another rich vein of form. We, we spoke much earlier in the season about how for strikers goals seem to come in batches. It certainly is working that way for you, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? I've gone through the um, start of the season where I didn't score many and Chopper scored loads. Um, then I went through a period while he was out scoring and uh, he came back, scored a few and now I've scored uh, five of my last three so hey, I think everyone at this ground as long as uh, someone's scoring goals and uh, we've now got two players scored over 15 goals this year already and uh, still 10 games to go. With 10 games to go, Kenny Jackett took his side to Elland Road, knowing that a win might open the door to automatic promotion. Having beaten United at the Den earlier in the season and now in a rich vein of form, the Lions were in confident mood. It was a special night for eight-year-old Cameron Harris, who celebrated his birthday as Millwall's mascot in front of the Sky TV cameras. That's Grant clears away, he's the one still in possession of that number one jersey for Leeds, Shane Higgs who started off the season as number one, this is Steve Morrison, he could be in here for Millwall, flashes it just wide of Ankergren's post. 
because Norbo's got a big problem here. He's chasing the ball. Ball's played forward and just misjudges the, uh, the bounce of the ball. And Morrison's in behind him. They see Kiznovo go down. He's got a big problem, but the angle's very tight. Ankergren just about does enough. He doesn't show Morrison a lot of the goal. You see Morrison's trying to bend it in with the outside of his right foot toward that far post. Doesn't quite do it, but leads with a big problem with Kiznovo. But there's the chance. What a big, big chance that might be in the game. Just drifts past the, the far post. Including five back-to-back -back wins. They've now played 17 in all competitions and only won four of them. Millwall moving the other way. 14 games they've played since a similar time. They've won nine, only lost one. Here's Dunn finding Chris Hackett, a former Oxford player. Najim Abdu, who they call Jimmy. And it's a terrific opportunity for Morrison. He's got it in at the near post. Millwall lead with just over 10 minutes played. It's the first time really that either side have got the ball down on the floor and put a few passes together and we see how effective Millwall can be when they do that, it starts down the right hand side they just keep the ball, they keep it ticking over lots of players involved, tidy passing, suddenly they're in behind that, that leads back four, and this is an excellent ball in just across the, uh, the face of the defence and no one really reacts to it, Morrison certainly does and does very very well, he missed one earlier on it's a very tight angle, it comes across to him he does the right thing, he just hits the target, Ankergru can't get back, can't make the save, and keeper very frustrated. Millwall there, they've shown exactly what they can do when they get the ball on the floor. Well, there's one sure far away to halt any hopes of a Leeds recovery, as far as Millwall are concerned. And that is by doubling their advantage. Hackett with the corner. And the header comes off the top of the crossbar by the captain, Paul Robinson. Robinson up against Bromby and he just gets a run on Lee Bromby. It's Robinson, it's a good header, not maybe the most powerful, but what, half a yard lower, that could just drop under the crossbar and oh, well, could have been two up at the break. Hard working side, they can make tackles as well, they can force the opposition back and they can play some great football. So from what we've seen tonight, they really are in with a great shout. If they carry on like this and keep playing well, show that consistency, that's what it's all about to get promotion. You've got to be consistent. And finish strongly, which what's they're doing here. But well, that should be that. Ten minutes to go. It's two 0 to Millwall. Maybe not the greatest people, a piece of goalkeeping from Casper Ankergren, but really two 0 is a, probably a true reflection of how much Millwall have dominated this game. It's good work actually from Sean Bat down that left-hand side. He wriggles away and puts Millwall into a two-goal lead. It's a good piece of work. The substitute on. Of course for Neil Harris, desperate to get a goal and he just it's too easy, he just goes away from two or three players, he battles for the ball, there's not an awful lot of pressure on him, comes in field, and there's no one closing him down and the goalkeeper going down to his right, that's a poor goal to concede at your near post, the last thing goalkeepers want to do is concede goals like that, again he does all the right things, Barry hits the target, hopes for the best, and the keeper makes a bit of a mess of his shot. Really, that underlines again how well Millwall have played. They do deserve to be two ahead. Your career's been relatively short. Would this be one of the better nights? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely up there, one of the best moments of my career. Scoring at Leeds away, you know, massive game for the, for the team, massive game for the club in terms of uh, the promotion uh, push. So, yeah, definitely, you know, a brilliant moment in my career. Talk us through the game firstly as a spectator and then when you came on. I mean, watching from the sideline, you must have felt that that Mill were in a measure of control, but possibly just needed that second. Yeah, I mean, watching from the bench, you know, it looked like we were the better team, you know, first half and second half. And, you know, I was itching to get on and, you know, because I thought maybe with a ball in behind, you know, I could cause a few problems. And, you know, luckily we, we've got the result, you know, I managed to score a goal as well. So, you know, brilliant. Slips it through the defender's legs. Schofield helps it on. Harris now with the goalkeeper to beat. Oh, takes the deflection. That's a corner. Yeah, Von Williams just spread himself enough. The ball clipped his fire and just went wide. But some fantastic link-up play there between Danny Schofield and Neil Harris. Going along the touchline, two of a couple of one-twos, and both times they took out their defender and left them for dead. Really good play there. 
And Dunn is over the ball. He then runs off down the line, but uh, Hackett's going to play it in with some whip and bend. Oh, and it's own goal! Who will have the lead? Danny Swales it is, who heads past his own goalkeeper. Terrific free kick from Chris Hackett. And it was Danny Swales rising to head it clear, who nods it straight into the back of his own net. If it had been a Millwall player, it would have been a cracker. From Danny Swales' point of view, it was a disaster. It's Millwall 1, Stockport 0. It's on this right-hand side with Vincent. Vincent has uh, support here from Johnson. Johnson comes inside and hits a great shot. And what, what a, a super sign. save from David Ford. I was actually going to say that's Johnson's stronger foot he's coming on to. And of course he releases a really good shot and it must have come round people because you know, at first I thought Ford he wasn't going to see that but he actually got his feet moving and made an excellent save. Just all the time it's only 1-0. Stop Paul will think we'll hang on and hang on and see if we can get something. Here's Tony Craig, it's uh, very deep for Williams. Too far for him, yeah. it's, it's it. It's in. Sure, it's yeah, now. It's in. It is now. And uh, Steve Morrison it is who gets it. Ball hits the underside of the bow, bounces just under the, uh, over the line. I think Neil Harris in the end got a, a touch just to make sure. But Steve Morrison it is who gets credited with the goal from that corner. From Williams in no man's land, really. It's Millwall 2, Stockport 0. Schofield goes past one. And uh, just probably overdid it there, Danny. But Harris does well. Now, can Morrison get the ball inside towards Danny Schofield? Offside. He can. Schofield no. past the goalkeeper, not offside still. Danny Schofield. And there's the third goal for Millwall. A virtuoso effort from a really tight angle there by Danny Schofield. It's now Millwall 3, Stockport 0. Alan Dunn into Schofield. Schofield. And he whipping across here, it's a good oh, and it's goal! And there's goal number four, it's another own goal, super cross from Danny Schofield, this time it's Paul Huntington who puts through his own goal, and it's Millwall 4, Stockport 0. And Trotter in towards uh, Obika, nice touch off again from him, now Alan Dunn, but he, he can keep this one in play <laughs> from uh, Chris Hackett, is Hackett going to go around the outside, he might do, but it's laid in towards John Obika! Oh, that's number five! Excellent play there, Alan Dunn lays it into a beat. He needs no second asking as he dumps it into the back of the net. It's now Millwall 5, Stockport 0. A remarkable run which had seen the Lions lose just once since Boxing Day had taken them to within touching distance of automatic promotion, with just eight games remaining. Here's uh, Morrison again on that right-hand side. Hackett's going like a train outside him. Morrison inside. Good break for Neil Harris. What can Harris do? Has a little look up. Tries to dig into the far corner. Hits the post. Morrison looking for the rebound. He's not that? behind. All played square by Dia Garaja out to this right-hand side. Carly Osborne being booed. He was the man who clattered into Steve Morrison. Up to McDonald. He's probably got a bit of a headache. Got that bandage on his head. It's offside. It's not offside. And David Ford has not been able to stop it. Offside. And Carl Court has scored for Brentford. Schofield now plays it out to Tony Craig on this near side. Back into Danny Schofield once more. He lays it in looking for uh, Abdu. Now Hackett picks it up, who's uh, playing quite central at the moment. He's got two ahead of him still, Chris Hackett. He works a shot for himself. Oh. And just... Uh, Goes wide of the target. In fact, it did cause a few problems. Bill Harris is looking for the secondary possession. So Schofield just manages to help it out to Tony Craig. Craig down into the channel to find Schofield again. Three in the box to aim for. Schofield tries to get past his man. Still Danny Schofield. Shot turned over the crossbar. Can Millwall get themselves back on level terms? It's a deep one. Again, it's got probably far too deep. But Morrison gets it back in there. And there is the head of the goalkeeper, Suchesne. It is who grasps it. Yeah. It is! It's Darren Ward! Is it Darren Ward? It's Paul, Paul Robinson. Robinson. Paul Robinson. Well, I was saying that earlier that a set piece looked the best plan. After dropping vital points against the Bees, it was a top of the table clash against Colchester United on Easter Monday. 
It was a tight affair, but the deadlock was broken by this superb strike with the outside of the right boot from Steve Morrison. Lions keeper David Ford won't want to watch the Colchester equaliser again. A long punt downfield and somehow he misjudged it, allowing Kevin Lisby to roll the ball into the back of the net. Fortunately for Fordy, that error wasn't to prove costly. That cross from Sean Batt headed into his own net by Colchester defender Danny Bath to get Millwall's promotion bandwagon right back on track. from Robinson. Well done Trotter, lays the ball out towards Bat, in fact it's Schofield. Schofield lays it into Bat now, can he finish? He can! They all have the lead! Liam Trotter started it, Danny Schofield carried it on and Sean Bat slides home, his third goal for Millwall. It's Millwall 1, Gillingham 0. Morrison's going to take the throw himself, he can sling it in long, we saw that at Colchester the other day and it goes headed up in the air. Jimmy Abdu's coming in, trying to win the header. Out to Tony Craig. Craig hits it! Oh! And Tony Craig on the volley! Over the head of Alan Julian, puts Millwall two up. Great strike from the left back. And Millwall now have a little comfort. It's Millwall two, Gillingham nil. Well, I'm not too sure if that was a shot or a tackle, but whatever way, Craig, he made sure it was his. He met it round about waist high on the half volley and connected with it, and it just looped perfectly over the goalkeeper and just under the crossbar. Ball up towards Neil Harris. Harris again goes down, but play continues. It's Schofield. Still opening up for Danny Schofield on his left foot shot. Danny Schofield throws it! Millwall three, Gillingham nil. What a great goal by Danny Schofield. It really does. The ball broke to him after Neil Harris was brought down just on the edge of the, the D on the centre circle. Danny picked up the ball, began to run up the defence. They all went initially with Sean Batch run off him. Danny checked onto his right. They all went for a block as he went to, as he dummy to shoot. Went back on his left and basically it just opened up the goal for him. He just used the last defender as almost a guide and just passed the ball into the opposite corner and the goalkeeper never moved. A frantic wave in there from Tony Craig. What are you doing? I take the corners from this side. <laughs> yeah, bit of a debate between uh, Liam Trotter and uh, Chris Hackett thinking about a short one, but Craig overrules them. Score of the second goal, Tony Craig, of course, today. Curls it in, it's very, very deep. Robinson's behind that, and there's the goal from Harris! It's four! Well, Millwall now are home and hose. Great corner from Tony Craig, well met by Paul Robinson at the far post. And Neil Harris, from no more than a couple of yards, simple header. It's Millwall four, Gillingham nil. With the finishing line in sight, worryingly Millwall began to pick up an injury or two and this was a below par performance against Yeovil Town at Huish Park. A rare defensive lapse from Darren Ward led to the first goal, Dean Bowditch scoring from 12 yards. Almost 12 months ago to the day, Yeovil had beaten the Lions 2-0 on this ground and it looked like being the same old story until four minutes into injury time, former Yeovil man John Abika popped up with the equaliser. After just one defeat in 19 games, Millwall were finally beaten again at the Gal Farm. The winning goal came from a corner, Peter Clark, the skipper, heading in at the far post. In front of the Sky TV cameras, Millwall once again made to pay for missed chances. This effort from John Abika coming back off the crossbar and the rebound from Steve Morrison hacked to safety. Where will 
do at the moment for Leighton Orient. Ball back into Abdu. Abdu to hack it with missed controls, but it breaks for Abdu and then Smith again. Smith into the feet of Harris to Morrison to Schofield, looking in towards Morrison again. Still. And the ball by Brentford Harris is in. The Harris! Oh! Just wide of the target. Everybody was on their feet saying goal, and it just goes inches past. The bounce wide, and Neil Harris then looks at the goalkeeper and said, Why didn't you deflect it in? The goalkeeper threw himself at Neil's feet, he lifted it over him, and it just bounced the wrong side of the post. Hackett will make his move down that right hand side. Smith, though, is going through the middle because it's opening up for him into Jimmy Abdu. Abdu slots it for Morrison, who's onside. He's been forced wide, he turns it back across. Smith with a volley. Oh, oh and that was heading goalwards took a big deflection, now Hackett, he puts the cross in, Harris with an overhead, oh, just over the bar. Well, that's a couple of really good chances created there, first of all the ball to the back post, now Jack Smith coming in, hit it with a really good volley, if it had got past the first defender, that really did have goal written on it, got deflected wide, he and Chris Hackett then worked another good crossing situation, ball swung in, Neil Harris with the overhead kick, and again, just inches over the crossbar. Gone all the way back there, now what does he do? Put it back in the mix, with a bit of height, towards Alexander. Alexander doesn't quite get there. Balls from Robinson! And they the goal! And it's skipper Paul Robinson on the volley! Who does it? It was the jump by Gary Alexander that caused the problem. It wasn't the best of clearances. And Robinson, who stayed in there, volleys it home. It's Millwall 1, Lake Norrin back out to uh, Barron again. Now into the feet of uh, Gary Alexander, who holds it up well. Harris has moved on. Now the ball is played up towards Harris in the penalty area. He nods it down, looking at Schofield. Ball ricochet, Schofield gets it away. Turns it inside to Alexander. Lovely ball for Scott Barron on the far side. Oh, it's a penalty kick, and Scott Barron has scored. Good football, good ball from Gary Alexander. And Scott Barron had kept his run going, was flattened in the process. And Neil will have the penalty kick, and uh, Neil Harris has given it to Steve Morrison. Let's, uh, I've not seen Steve take a penalty, let's hope he can uh, make it to 20 goals for the season here from the penalty spot. He steps up, sends the keeper the right way, and the one or two to the good, Steve Morrison, his 20th goal of the season, and has that put this game to rest? No or two, Lake Norrient, Neil. Yeah, the referee says, are you OK? Robbo doesn't know where the ball is. Takes a deflection and it's in, and they have got one back. And I, I couldn't tell you who got his head on that one, but uh, it was a soft goal. Robinson wasn't, I don't think, was quite ready for it to be taken. Well, it wasn't just that, it was the it was fact on the line, Scott Barron panics and it went between his legs. So surely it is who uh, is credited with the goal. So now we'll, well, I've got a nervy couple of minutes. This was a game that was vital to both clubs, with Millwall chasing automatic promotion and Tranmere desperately trying to avoid the drop. Not for the first time, a controversial penalty was to prove the turning point as Ian Thomas Moore went to ground under the slightest challenge from Paul Robinson. Referee Neil Swarbrick awarded a spot kick which Thomas Moore himself duly dispatched. This was a lacklustre Lions display and a spectacular strike from Andy Robinson on 66 minutes ensured there would be no way back, dealing a major blow to Moore's hopes of finishing second. Remarkably, results elsewhere on the 1st of May meant any one of five clubs could claim second spot on the final day. Millwall's defeat at Prenton Park had handed the initiative to Leeds and the Lions' fate was no longer in their own hands. And so the hopefuls. Millwall and Swindon locked together on 82 points. The winners today could ever take Leeds if they fail to win. Even a draw might be enough for Millwall should Leeds lose by two or more. It is win or bust for Swindon. Of course the house is full, the fans here have seen just one loss all season, the Lions defence is the best in League One, 
Their attack's none too shabby either. Steve Morrison has 18 league goals so far. Alongside him today, Lewis Graben replaces Neil Harris. The other change is Sean Batt for Tony Craig. That will be a Jonathan Douglas free kick here for Swindon Town. In the middle, he's got Painter and Austin, and also up there is a Lessonel Jean Francois. In by Douglas, looking for Austin away by the head of Robinson, driven back in, and Swindon lead. It's a stunning strike and a stunning start for Swindon. Danny Ward with a wonderful finish. In goes that free kick, swelling in towards Robinson with a header. And the captain heads wide. Well, Paul Robinson is a useful source of goals for Millwall. He's got four in the league so far this season. Yeah, he got away from the uh, attention of, I think, Painter, who was watching him. Hackett with Douglas here. Douglas gave the ball away. This is Bat. Bat goes down. Penalty. As clear as day. Sean Bat was tumbled, and Millwall have the chance now to draw level in this game. They have to win. Well, Swindon will uh, peel and protest, but. Keith Strand will not change his mind, that's for sure. It was uh, Douglas here with a challenge on Sean Batt. It was as clear a penalty as you will ever see this. Gets all man, no ball. Here comes Morrison. He's had such a wonderful season for Millwall. He's first back in the Football League. Here comes Morrison, and he scores! Back on level terms, Millwall. And this game, which has begun so dramatically, has another twist. Hackett's corner. Sent in long, backing by Darren Ward and flicked over the top by Lucas. Lucas had to keep his eye on that from Darren Ward. It was looping and dropping in. A winner, a winner. The kingdom for a winner. This is Bat. And the news is, by the way, that that roar you heard was for the fact that Bristol Rovers lead Leeds United now by a goal to nil. fans have heard the news, Leeds nil, Bristol Rovers won. A winner here would be enough for Millwall, or for Swindon. Here comes the cross towards Painter, and watched away by David Ford. Now the news spreading like wildfire around the ground that they've heard, they have heard that there is a goal in Yorkshire, Leeds nil, Bristol Rovers won, which means as things stand here, a winner, neither team today would send them up in second place. Billy Painter, after his challenge, now Trotter. Morrison now with a chance to stretch the legs and stretch Jean-Francois. In the middle is Harris, Morrison's cross, oh, own goal! Gordon Greer, Swindon's captain, with an own goal which might, might mean promotion for Millwall. Gordon Greer, who has been so reliable this season for Swindon, got the final touch on Morrison's cross, and Swindon's skipper hands Millwall the glimpse, the glimmer of the championship next season. Morrison's pace here, got away from uh, Jean-Francois. Oh, Gordon Greer's legs in a tangle, the ball across the line. The skipper with a slip, which might prove so, so expensive to Swindon. They led, now they trail. Gordon Greer's own goal. The Den is jumping and believing and thinking they're close. Well, the news has come.
Beckham, through it is now. Leads with ten men, two. Just a Rovers one. So the ten men have rallied, and now even a win here wouldn't be enough for Millwall. The atmosphere has fallen flat. All they can do is win the game here, Millwall, and then hope. This is Laird for Millwall. Laird's ball through for Neil Harris here. It's Steve Morrison. Morrison! Oh, that is absolutely sensational! Steve Morrison will be second of the game. And Millwall now lead by 3-1. to one. And that, with the news elsewhere, might be the goal which, for Millwall, will clinch a place in next season's championship. Kenny Jackets Millwall have a 3-1 lead now, thanks to a goal, a second of the game, and a 20th league goal this season for Steve Morrison. Let's ball forward here, it drops to Morrison, who just took aim, and this just flies, flies past the goalkeeper, Lucas. Morrison Millwall's main man this season, with maybe a pivotal goal. Options here are simple, the left of Sheen or the right of Douglas. Morris in the way is... Uh, is he prepares to take the free kick? Options here, then a... Uh, the left boot of Sheehan, or the right of Douglas, it's going to be, I think, Sheehan. Sheehan's free kick deflects in. Painter's touch. Swindon's goal. And we're back to 3-2. Smith here with the throw then for Millwall. Well, there's a whistle. It's all over here. Millwall have won, thanks to Morrison's double, by three goals to two, but... Is that enough? Can they hope that Leeds fail to win? If Leeds do win, then they go up. Millwall hoping, hoping for a goal at Ellen Road. It finishes here, Millwall 3, Swindon 2. Sadly, the news soon filtered through from Ellen Road that Leeds had beaten Bristol Rovers to secure the runners-up spot. So for Millwall, it would be the playoffs once more, starting with a semi-final against Huddersfield Town. Whatever the outcome, it had been a remarkable season. The Lions had finished third, three points better off than 12 months previously, and there was a steely determination to see the job through. Time to take it. Here is James Henry. No shot and there's the opening goal. It's no all one tram there over still with just over four minutes on the watch. Steve Morrison is in the clear here, keeps his head and buries it into the back of the net. And no one have got the lead. Ball into uh, Trotter on the edge of the area. Still Liam Trotter. Yes! This is a Liam Trotter levels it right away! Well, how about that on his Millwall debut? There's yeah, ball through for Neil Harris here. It's Steve Morrison. Morrison! Oh, that is absolutely sensational! Steve Morrison will be second of the game. Still opening up for Danny Schofield on his left foot shot. Danny Schofield levels it! Morrison's still having a chance. Yeah! Oh, 